we're live now. OK, thank you. Good evening uh, all. Uh, this is our now 10th virtual meeting. Uh, due to Corona virus. May I first of all ask uh, the members to uh, committee members to introduce themselves? Uh, I start with myself. I'm Councilor Vizan for Ali. Vice Chairman, but I'm chairing the meeting today tonight. Thank you. Marilyn? Yes, good evening. I'm Councillor Marilyn Ashton. I'm the Conservative spokesman on the Planning Committee. Simon? Hello, I'm Councillor Simon Brown. And Jenna? I'm Councillor Anjana Patel and I'm a full member of Planning Committee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ajay? Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Councillor Ajay Maru. Christine? Hello, I'm Christine Robson. Um, I'm actually a reserve member of the of the Planning Committee, but um, yeah, thank you. Christopher? Uh, Councillor Christopher Baxter, and I'm a full member of the Planning Committee. Uh, thank, thank you. Now, as you already know, you must be familiar with the protocols, but I still would like uh, to repeat it. Uh, we should uh, keep uh, the videos uh, on all the time and uh, but to put microphone on mute unless speaking. In case of technical problems, meeting will adjourn until resolved. If member loses connection, meeting will adjourn until reconnected. If technical problem persists, the meeting is uh, incorrect and the meeting will be abandoned to a later date. When voting members to state, I have heard the discussion and a vote to grant or refuse the application. And we'll go by clock on, e uh, on our computers. And, uh, and also, I mean, uh, please note that meeting is being videoed and audio recorded and will be available to watch and listen to on the website. Uh, may I ask uh, attendance by reserves, uh, please? Ajay? Uh, Councillor Ajay Maru, um, for Keith Ferry, I think. Ferry, Keith, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Yes, for Keith Ferry. Thank you. And uh, Christine? Thank you, Chair. You'll forgive me. I am a reserve, as I said, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, for, I'm uh, for. I've, got, uh, I've got a note uh, for Councillor Sachin Shah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I've got uh, two respectable members to speak uh, Councillor uh, John Hinckley on two items 201 and 202 and also Councillor Jean Lemmyman uh, again on the items 201 and uh, uh, 202. Um, and Jenna, you want to say something? Yeah, I do actually. Um, you said um, Councillor Christine Badnell is actually reserving for Sachin Shah. Is Sachin Shah actually a mem reserve member of this committee? I'm not sure. Well, my name's Christine Robson, not Christine Bednall. I might have some bearing. Sorry, Chris, on sorry Christine Robson is uh, sorry. Christine Robson is actually reserving for Sachin Shah. But is Sachin Shah on on the list of reserve member or a, or a member of this committee? I'm not sure. Can you clarify as that, understand. please? As I understand, he's uh, still a member. He resigned for as a chair. So we we have to decide it later on. And Jenna? Um, chairman, with all due respect, is not a member of the committee. He's it's not printed oh, on the papers. Okay. Uh, but I don't think it matters. But well. I think it must be, must be, I think it's uh, error, so it might be by mana asset. Christine? Thank you, Anjana, for pointing out. So Thank you. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a typing error here. Uh, the next item is uh, declaration of interest. Any interest to declare by any members of the committee? No, thank you. Uh, minutes of the last committee held on 20th of January. Everybody's happy to agree on the minutes? Agree. Thank Agreed. you. Now I've got uh, two public questions. One is uh, from Mike uh, Williams. 
and the second is Mr. Jeremy Clevers. So, officers, can you just ask uh, Mike William to, to read his question? Yeah, I'm here. I will Thank, read you, my Thank you, Mr. William. Would the committee agree that given the restrictions imposed by lockdown, and in particular the challenges around site visits, that decisions on major development should be deferred until the process can allow members to fully evaluate major planning proposals, particularly given that a delay of a month or so on decisions which have the potential to impact communities for decades is entirely proportionate. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, our response is the concerns raised are understandable. The lockdown has required the council to review how the planning process can continue for all types of application. The government has made it clear that continuing the planning process is extremely important, both in terms of economic recovery, post COVID and, and the delivery of housing, which as you are probably aware is a government priority. It, it has also been made clear that council, council should continue to determine major applications, not just smaller schemes. And legislation has been brought forward to ensure that decisions can still be made. We have been running virtual planning committee uh, since May last year, and we have recently introduced virtual site visits. We have extended consultation periods for commenting on planning applications and especially for larger schemes where we have doubled the time for comments to be made. And for the large scale controversial schemes, we have facilitated meetings with local residents and ward members so that further opportunity is there to make concerns known. Officers have also agreed longer determination periods with applicants. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Have you got any supplementary? Yes, I have and forgive me, it's a fairly obvious one, but I'm sure you recall, uh, Councillor Ali, at the last meeting, in response to public questions, you gave an undertaking that there would be a site visit in respect of the Vaughan Road car park development. It's sufficiently contentious and with such a potentially major impact on the local community. You at the time, I think quite rightly, judged that it was appropriate that there should be a site visit. Um, and that, of course, was mid-January and we were arguably in a worse position with the pandemic at that point. Now we can see some light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know how long the tunnel is, but we can see some way out of it. We're not talking about major delays here, but we are saying that the importance of these major planning decisions does warrant a site visit in person by the councillors. And you agreed with us a month ago. What has changed? Uh, Mr Williams, I, I think we, we must have misunderstood what we meant that individually the members of the committee can go around, but we'll wait until the restrictions are eased and then we'll make a decision on the site visits that we can go as a group. Uh, but at the moment, I think it's, uh, we, we will stay on virtual site visits and uh, hopefully let's hope and pray that the uh, restrictions are eased and then we'll just uh, think about what again. But again, I mean, you, you as I mentioned that uh, all the residents, uh, we are facilitating all the residents of our members to come together and consult. Thank you. I, I don't think I misunderstood. If you listen to the recording of the last planning meeting, you, you made a very clear statement on that, and that's what I'm asking you to adhere to now. Yeah, the sta statement was that when the restrictions are eased, and hopefully less hope, and when this application comes forward and then we will take it to scene. Thank you. Yes. Chairman, Thank you, Mr. Please Williams. Forgive, Chairman, please forgive me if I may just interject very briefly. Yes. And I do recognise that the disadvantage you had is that you were reading out an answer that was prepared for you. It might have been better, with all due respect, if you had answered it in your own words 
because actually your own words are excellent. You are a very fair-minded man, and I've known you for years and can say that in all honesty. But what I do think is that it is worth noting, and this is for the members, members of the public watching this, that the Conservative side on this committee um, were very unhappy with the idea of institutionalised virtual site visits. We're not happy with them. And we um, suggested that we would be able to um, more quickly than perhaps um, others thought, uh, reintroduce them. And yet, uh, Councillor Ferry made us put to the vote that we carry on with virtual site visits. Um, and I would actually like to say, and I'm happy to put it to the vote even, although maybe not now because this is for questions, that we do as soon as possible reintroduce personal site visits. Um, we're, we're doing a lot better now with COVID, thank goodness. And I don't know about you, but I think I believe we're in a very different place thanks to the vaccination programme and everything than we were in January. And thank yeah. you for your time. Th th thank, thank you, Marilyn, your comments. And uh, we will uh, we'll discuss it at a little stage. Let's, let's hope that uh, restrictions are eased and then uh, hopefully we will go forward in, in a positive way. Thank you. Uh, I've got a second question from Mr. Uh, Jeremy Clivos. Yes, hello. Thank uh, you. Um, I'd like to ask committee members what importance they attach to receiving, considering and responding to concerns and issues raised by members of the public. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Clivos. Again, uh, I've got uh, uh, answer. Uh, the starting point for determining uh, any application as set out in the town and county planning legislation is the planning policy framework. And whether I mean, with respect, that's not the question I'm asking. Uh, I'm going just just give me a time and then we will just take it. OK, so you, you, you'll get the response. OK, thank you. Uh, in the planning policy framework and whether the proposals comply with those policies. However, the legislation also recognized that there may be other materials planning uh, consideration which may indicate a scheme is not acceptable. Even if the policy tests are met in this regard, comments and concerns raised by the public are an important element of considering an application and often these comments can draw attention to matters that officers and members may not have been aware of. So significant importance can be attached to them where the comments relate to a material planning consideration. Thank you. OK, thank I mean, you. We, thank always you. Take, uh, we always take uh, the comments and uh, consultation into account, all the committee members and what councils and uh, it's always, I mean, because we represent you and we have to take your uh, uh, comments and your suggestion into account before the scenes are made. Thank you. OK, thank you. I have a supplementary. Yes. Yeah, um, and this is that I asked a question at the previous meeting on 20th of January um, and the minutes record um, that I will receive a further written response, but I haven't received that. Um, but the minutes don't record the question that I asked, nor the response that it received. So the committee today can't effectively respond to the question that I asked. Um, I also note that um, earlier in, in this meeting, in response to the question raised by um, Mike Williams, which referred to the question I asked last last meeting, there does appear to be a difference of opinion uh, between your, your, your yourself and, and he who was present at the meeting um, about what took place. Um, in view of this, I asked the committee to consider whether it would be appropriate for the minutes to record the questions asked by the public and the responses given to those questions. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, I'll make a note of it and uh, uh, advise the officers accordingly. OK, thank you. Um, but they didn't they didn't respond to me last time and they still haven't responded to me. Um, uh, and no, and there's, said, I'll, I'll ask there's no record. There's no record of the of the question that I asked in the minutes, nor of the responses that that were made to those. And there is a difference of view yeah, now I'll, about I'll, what I'll, took place I'll, at the I'll, meeting. I'll, I'll, Surely I'll, that should be in the minutes. I will ask the officers to advise you uh, as soon as possible. 
Thank you. Okay, thank I, you. I don't think that's satisfactory, but there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A good evening. Uh, there's no petitions, uh, deputations, not none notified, references from the council and other committees, none notified. Addendums, uh, do you agree with the addendums? Have you received and you're happy with that? Yeah, agree. That's it. Thank you. Representation on the planning application has been received in respect of the application C below. So anyway, now may I suggest, uh, uh, suggest uh, that uh, we change uh, the sequence of uh, the items. So if you can bring uh, Oakley House 202 because we got uh, uh, speakers on that uh, first and then 201, second and uh, premium house and yeah. do the members agree agreed. on that agreed yeah great great thank you officers can we just now please uh, take two or two first yeah. yes chair i'll, I'll so, share my screen is is it bly smith on that uh, it's me today i'm afraid uh, beverly yeah sorry beverly. yeah that's okay unfortunately the case officer is not well Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yep. can see it now. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So this application is in relation to an application for prior approval um, to use property at Oakley House um, to change the use from a nursing home to a registered nursery um, set out in the application. The application, um, I, I will have to say now, is uh, still under consultation in terms of the site notice expires in a couple of days time. So the recommendation that's before you today is to um, recommend um, that whatever you, uh, well, we're recommending approval, but that the authority to issue the decision is uh, delegated to myself pending the end of the consultation period. Because of the way prior approvals work, um, we have limited time in which to issue a decision. Otherwise, there is a deemed consent applied, um, which in this case means that we've had to bring this forward to you as requested by uh, members um, while that period is still running. So the application for prior approval, there are four matters which have to be considered as part of this, and that's outlined in some detail within the officer's report. Um, on page 124 of the agenda, it, it refers to, first of all, uh, the general permitted development order and whether or not this application um, conforms with the requirements for prior approval within the general permitted development order. A previous application was refused because the proposals included a mixed use on the site. This application has come forward solely for the use of a nursery. The applicant has confirmed that, um, reconfirmed it in a letter which has been circulated even today, and we have nonetheless uh, attached a condition uh, or recommending a condition that actually sets that out clearly. So in officer's view, yes, this application does fall within the remit of being considered within the, um, the general permitted development order. The matters that we can consider, unlike a planning application, are restricted to certain areas. The first one I'll look at is transport and highways impacts. The application was accompanied by a transport assessment um, in relation to the use, which is up for, up for up to 127 children and staff. The application um, as I said, was submitted with the transport assessment, which has been assessed by the Highways Authority, who have concluded, subject to the details of a travel plan, which again is recommended as a condition, 
that the methodology and the outcomes of the transport assessment are agreed. Um, following questions raised at briefing, I've asked uh, uh, Barry Phillips from the Highways Authority to attend tonight um, to respond to any questions. So he should be here for any specific questions you may raise on that. But we did seek technical advice from them based on the, on the information submitted and the advice we have from the officers is that an objection um, would not be appropriate on highways and transport impacts. The second area that we can look at are noise impacts of the development. The application was accompanied by a noise assessment. Um, members asked a briefing for um, details of that assessment in terms of uh, the statements where comparisons were made in terms of the external space and how um, what nursery that was and was that relevant for the case. The applicants have confirmed um, today from their transport assessments that the nursery that they based the, um, at their analysis on is a nursery in Warrington. The analysis was based on the use of the garden by 33 children at one time. They have also advised that they have done similar studies for other nurseries. This one in particular was chosen because the problems were deemed to be the worst, the highest noise levels. So um, bearing in mind this proposal um, is for a maximum of 28 children at any one time using the external spaces. Officers consider that this is an appropriate comparison. The full noise report has been re reviewed by environmental health and they have concluded both in terms of the methodology and the conclusions of the report that there is um, subject to the acoustic fencing being provided again secured through condition that there should be no undue noise impacts arising from this development. The third aspect to look at is contamination and again this has been referred to environmental health in relation to contamination on the site, potential contamination on the site and they have advised that there is no issue in respect to this on the site over and, over and above. Um, there is no issue on the site that would warrant a recommendation for refusal. You will note from the addendum that we have added a condition, a recommended condition, that the use of the garden is restricted to the hours that were considered within the noise assessment, i.e. between 9am and 5pm. And we would ask members if they are minded to grant that that condition is attached to the proposal. There has been a considerable amount of opposition to this scheme, as you will note, and there is an addendum and a supplemental addendum which summarises that. At this point, um, I will ask members if they have any questions. Thank you, Beverly. Any questions, members? Yes, yes Marilyn. Yes, thank you. Very quickly, um, we did ask about um, the comparison that was made by the applicant to another nursery at our briefing and and I was rather expecting um, you to uh, revert to us with um, much more detail during uh, the intervening period. Um, and and it's, it, you know, I'm not blaming you Beverly for it, I'm just saying um, I don't know when you've got this information, but what, what is interesting about this is that um, first of all, I don't know about you, but I've never been to Warrington. Um, and secondly, um, I don't know what sort of area it is. I don't know what kind of road it is. I don't know, you know, what size the garden is. I, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure what, you know, the size of the nursery is, how long it's been there for. In fact, there's so many things about this so-called comparison that we know. So can I just ask you a little bit more detail about now that you, you know it's been raised? It's it's rather an odd thing to do anyway, I think. Uh, but um, can you just give us a bit more information about this this comparison? Because I thought we were supposed to judge each on its own merits anyway. Well, we are meant to judge each each, each on its own mer merits, but members asked for in terms of the noise assessment and what those levels were with children in the garden, specifically how you assess those, what those noise levels are. 
therefore an assessment of a comparable size of numbers of children and the noise they make is relevant. The, the applicants are here, so I, I'm sure they will cover off some of this anyway in, in, in their comments to you. The nursery, as I understand, um, had a capacity of 33 children and all 33 children were in the garden at the time the assessment was made to present specifically to present a worst case assessment in terms of potential noise. Um, the capacity of that nursery, as I understand it, is now increased to 48, but in terms of comparable 28 children as proposed here in the garden, it, it seems like this is a, a, a suitable um, comparator in terms of noise levels or potential noise levels. Yes, or any, any information about this specific nursery, because had we known this today, we might have been able to check it out a bit. But anyway, it's too late now. I'm I um, apologise, I couldn't get the uh, information to you earlier. Yeah. Thank you, Bavarek. Can I go to Councillor Ajay? Maru, you got your hand up first. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Beverly, uh, for the presentation. Just a few quick, maybe, points or clarifications here, please, uh, if I may. Um, what was the total number of children uh, you said uh, were? Sorry, total number of children. Uh, for, the nurse, for the proposed nurse. Yeah, for the, yes, yes, sorry, a big um, one. It's up to 127 children, although um, the management arrangements will, um, and because they, they get staggered hours, some people are only mornings or afternoons, the capacity is likely to only be 80% of that. Okay. That's typical uh, of most nursery schools. Sure, thank you. Chair, if I may just, I've got maybe another couple of points. Yes, if I yes, may. yes, yes, yes. Please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are we able to restrict these numbers? I mean, OK, um, maybe not to do much with planning, but are we sort of uh, able to restrict the numbers here and the um, conditions? It's very difficult to attach that through a condition. When, when we restrict numbers on schools, it has to be through a Section 106 agreement linked to the application. So in, in this case, um, my advice is that a condition on that um, is not applicable here. It would have to be through a section 106, and that has not been discussed with the applicant. Okay. But that, uh, I, I will also say there will be capacity numbers in terms of their registration that would limit the numbers anyway, given the size of the property. Sure. Chair, I have two more points, if I may. Yes, please. yes, sir, yeah, you just yeah, thank you. And then we'll yeah. Um, it was, it, it, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's good to note uh, here, Beverly, that uh, the, in future there will be no sort of uh, change of views, which the, uh, the, they have, the applicant has uh, said that, right, in a letter. Am I right in understanding that? That is correct, and the requirements of the legislation prohibit it anyway. So there will be no future change of views, right? Um, without coming back to us, yes. OK, as such. OK, um, and finally, just a quick point here. Um, it being a nursery school, uh, would they, the applicant, be using uh, the premises for any public functions or gatherings? Um, only insofar as they are an ancillary to the nursery school, but they wouldn't be using it independently as a community use, for example. Yeah, that, like a function that was hall or something. In previous applications, which is why the previous ones had been refused. It's now been made clear that this is purely for nursery use, and 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 therefore anything over and above anything ancillary to that is not covered by this commission. Should it be granted? Lovely. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Councillor Simon Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple on transport since Barry's here. Uh, firstly, when you came to your assessment of trip numbers or numbers of journeys, I should say, could you tell me what percentage uh, is you percentages you used in terms of number of car trips versus cycling versus public transport versus walking uh, for the population that are going to use this? Nursery school. Uh, thank you, um, Simon, for your question. 
Um, it was 75% walking, I believe it was something like uh, so 75% walking, 11% car, and I think 12% was uh, the remainder, which is um, scooting and public transport. Okay, all right, so 75% walking. So could I then turn to, I think on page one, two, three, your figures where you're estimating the increase in number of trips. So first of all, I think you say 33 in the AM round trips. I assume, first of all, that means 33 journeys to the school, drop the children off and then continue. And that's just 33 of those. Uh, so that's counting uh, that and 34 in the afternoon. So that is based on only 11% use by car. Does it also include the number of vehicle trips by staff members? Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't include staff members. So it's, it's, it's additional trips on the network to and from yes. the staff. So, so this vehicle trips we are talking about. Ve vehicle trips, yes. OK, thank you. That's all I wanted to ask. Thank you, Simon. Next, uh, Councillor Ajay Patel. Anjana Patel. And then I should yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you, Beverly, for your presentation. Um, I uh, was I'm going to uh, ask uh, on the same uh, thing because the noise um, question that we asked, um, I don't think has been fully answered uh, by you, Beverly, because um, we clearly asked and we were told that you actually have, how did you measure it was my question. And I, you were, I was told very clearly that you compare it with a similar thing. I know we are not supposed to, and we have we have to um, judge every application on its own merits, but obviously I we were told that. So we asked, and I don't think I, I clearly understood what who you comparing it with, um, with 127 children. In, in an area that it is in and all that. So that's one question. The second question, Chair, if, I've got about a couple of questions, if you don't mind, Chair. Yes, Angela. Uh, the other yeah. question I'm asking is about uh, to bury uh, the transport link to this place. Um, if you can explain what kind of a transport is available, especially in this area. And when we are talking about a nursery, uh, obviously, we are talking about very young kids and parents may have two, three children. We don't know. Um, so how, how, wh wh what are the transport links as far as I'm concerned is what I want to know. And then um, asking 75% of um, the um, children or parents coming, um, you, we, you're expecting them to walk or cycle or scooter, whatever, um, is something that I would want to be explained to as well. Because I, uh, I I don't think uh, I know you're not supposed to compare, but I'll ask a question again. Um, is there any other school which actually has 75 percent who actually walk or cycle to the school in, in the whole of the borough? The nursery or school or primary, you know? Thank you. If I might come in on, on just clarifying the noise uh, report. In order to assess the impact, a potential impact um, of the children in the garden at any one time, um, it is important to to assess what the background noise levels are, um, and assess the noise made by that group of children, and how those two levels compare in terms of you know the technical noise levels that are recorded. Um, I'm afraid I can't give you the details of that because I'm not a noise engineer, as you, as you will know. However, we have responded, we have referred it to environmental health in terms of the methodology used and the conclusions reached. The nursery was, this particular nursery was chosen because of the 33 children in the garden of all the nurseries that had been assessed made the most noise. So it was, and I, I would agree, they pick the right one in, the, in that respect. You want the one that's made the most noise so you can say, how does that compare with background noise levels and is there likely to be a, a problem? Um, so that's the benchmark because this nursery isn't operating. We can't measure the noise of children in this garden. You have to take a, a, an example elsewhere. And that is how it was used. And that um, 
is how that, that gets translated over to this site in terms of that number of people, children in a garden and potential noise levels versus the background noise levels. So it, it, it is relevant in that respect. I hope I've explained that clearly. Uh, I don't, I, I still don't get it because I would actually, uh, why would you not tell us which nursery you have compared to so we actually can see the location of it. Um, um, who you have compared it's a, it's a nursery in Warrington. In Warrington. And but they also looked at other nurseries in Greater Manchester and in London, and this one in Warrington, um, as I'm advised today, um, made the most noise. So it is the worst case scenario, which is the best position to be in if you want to uh, have a benchmark noise level to set against background noise levels. Okay, so the transport question, I'm sure uh, Barry can answer that. What kind of uh, public transport we have in that area, please? Yeah, sure. The, the, the nearest public transport areas are around the Hatch End station. It's about a 10 minute walk from the site. So there's a number of bus routes that run through there. Um, it, that's the closest, if you like, in terms of um, public transport, which is available. Uh, there are cycle routes that run through the area, but that's where the best pub transport links are. And that train is an overhead train, right? Hatch End has only got one overhead. Yes, Hatch End is an overground. It's an overground line. Overground, yeah. yeah? Yes. Um, ten minutes walk, yeah, and we are expecting these little children, um, mothers with God knows how many children, to walk, uh, and that's ten minutes adults walking, I guess. I don't know how 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 long it will take for a for a little children to walk. No idea. Um, so. Obviously, as far as the walking and you're not we are not expecting all these 120 children, 27 children coming from Hatch End to this nursery, because I what I would understand from the demography of this area is that uh, the people living around this area are kind of um, uh, elderly, you know, um, seniors living in that area. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank I, you. I don't think my my question has been answered fully. Thank you. OK, sir. thank you. Angela. Marilyn, you got uh, another question? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have one more go about the nursery, but strangely, uh, we, we've decided to compare this two, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm exercised about it, you see, because um, is this nursery in a quiet area? When you say background noise, um, how do we know what sort of background noise? We haven't got an address. We've never seen a, 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 a ordinance survey map. We've got no uh, way of, of, of checking the accuracy of this. And I'm assuming that the suggestion of which nursery to compare it to wasn't our suggestion. I'm assuming that the suggestion was the applicant's suggestion. And I, I just think that committee need to, when we base decisions on anything that we're told, anything like 75% walking, 11% car, I mean, what planet? 12% uh, uh, rem remainder, um, what, 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 segways? I mean, what, how, how are people gonna get there? Um, I mean, when we're told these, these sort of, uh, this kind of data, um, we have a decision to make. We have to check the accuracy, the believability, the, cred the credibility and the plausibility of these things. Um, and, and when we're given um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but there's this fictitious kind of nursery that in an area we don't know, um, we can't check, we can't, the, the point I'm making Beverly, and I say this respectfully to you, is we need to make sure that what we're being told that the council is basing its recommendation on is reasonably accurate. And if we, we have to be satisfied that we're, we're basing our our uh, decision on something that we, we can we can trust, and I'm I'm very uneasy about particularly um, the, this this Warrington business um, because we've no idea what the background noise was like anyway, and it seems to be a much smaller concern. And also, I mean, the the idea that 75% of children with this kind of catchment area, young children, are going to um, walk there. It's fanciful. How, 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 how can anybody 
with, with any idea of how things are in, in, in a modern day context, people with busy lives, particularly in the winter months when it's dark, how can anybody suggest that and, and us trust the data? I, I find it extraordinary. And I've been involved on the planning committee for a very long time. And I've never, I've actually never seen anything so ridiculous. Thank you, Marilyn. Point taken. So can we just uh, proceed with uh, our objector first, Mr. David uh, Glassman? Thank you, Chair. I don't know whether I can be seen or heard. Yes, uh, we can see you, uh, Mr. Glassman. Thank you very much indeed then, Chair. I live close to the site and represent 758 petitioners from some 500 affected households. On their behalf, I ask you to reject the officer's recommendations and to refuse this substantially unchanged fourth application. Detailed reasons have been submitted. Transport and traffic assumptions are based on misleading comparisons with a nursery which is much smaller. We have lost than a your I think your network is a bit weak, so we can't hear you properly. Um, okay. I can I can hear. I can. I can hear Chair. Um should I just continue then and please stop me if you can't, Chair. Yeah. Um, transport and traffic assumptions are based on misleading comparisons with a nursery which is much smaller, within a denser population, and much closer to public transport. The previous application was refused on noise grounds relating to comings and goings at the site. This application likewise fails to assess these impacts and should, for reasons of consistency, be refused. That same refusal states that there would be detrimental impact on the neighbouring residents. Contrary to the Harrow Local Plan, the London Plan and the National Planning Policy Framework. Nothing has changed. This reason for refusal should be repeated. Harrow Council's website shows that very few young children live in the area, yet the applicants suggest that 18 of the 25 staff and 97 of 127 babies and toddlers would walk or cycle to school each day with parents making up to four round trips in all weathers. The applicants gloss over the TFL's rating for Oakley Road. 1A, very poor, difficult to access by transport other than private car. The applicants' traffic projections are contrary to reason. However, that should not have prevented them from being assessed with rigour by officers. They were not. The realistic, realistic traffic, safety, volumes, congestion, street parking and particulate pollution impacts of this proposal have been ignored. Why have the case officers accepted the applicants unevidenced assertions and ignored the unreasonable assumptions of the application as a whole. Over the course of this process, there have been sufficient inconsistencies and procedural mistakes for the objectors to ask a judge to review the lawfulness of a decision to grant the application, also the actions of the LPA. They intend to challenge the way in which the recommended decision has been made. This application should be reduced, uh, re, uh, refused tonight. It should not have been accepted as a prior application and the supporting information is not believable and its consideration has been negligently inadequate. I ask you to refuse the grant on both counts. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Glasper. Uh, may I ask uh, the applicant, three minutes please, uh, uh, good evening, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can see you. Thank you. OK. Uh, good evening, Chair and members of the Planning Committee. Um, the proposal before you is the subject of a previously refused scheme, various rounds of scoping and pre-application engagement with your officers. 
This is a prior approval application and therefore only the impacts associated with transport and highways, noise and contamination are up for consideration. The Council in their previous decision of a prior approval application have established that there is no objection with regards to transport and highways impacts and contamination. The only impact that was identified was noise associated with the comings and goings of people and vehicles, which has now been addressed through the updated traffic surveys to take account of the revised parking and access arrangements and additional noise surveys. I have already provided a detailed written response dated 12th of February to the matters raised by Asheville Town Planning and will take all of that as read. All of the traffic and noise surveys have been diligently undertaken by scoping out the parameters with the relevant departments of the Council. This is evident from the consultation responses that have been received, confirming the comprehensiveness of the surveys and all assumptions that have been made to reflect the absolute worst case scenarios. The applicant is aware that local residents are not in favour of the proposal, but the considerations of the prior approval must remain limited to the three point criteria, all of which has been addressed in consultation with the Council. Hence, there is a united position and where necessary planning conditions have been agreed to ensure there is control and compliance over the nature of the proposed use. No objective or technical as evidence has been put forward by anyone to counter the submissions made by the applicant and indeed agreed by the council. Children's day nurseries operate very differently to schools because the pattern of arrivals and departures are not limited to morning and afternoon peaks. Nursery children can be enrolled for a morning session, afternoon session or full day care, depending on their ages and needs which means the activity is more evenly spread out during the day. Hence, the associated traffic and noise would follow a similar pattern. Likewise, children's outdoor play activities will be limited to small groups and staggered throughout the day. I appreciate that members will feel under pressure from the volume of objections to perhaps vote against the proposal, but there is no sound planning, legal or technical basis upon which uh, to take such a stance. I would therefore respectively invite the members of the committee to support their officer's re recommendation by resolving to grant the prior approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask now John, Councillor John, please? Five minutes, please. Um, Chairman, if I may go first, Councillor Jean Lammerman, is that okay. all right? Yes. Thank, yes, you. Thank you. Um, frankly, as we've got five minutes and I really don't know where to begin. It's like being on a roundabout. Um, you know, I'm here to represent the views and wishes and concerns of the residents in Hatch End. I don't have an interest other than that. And I know that both John and I were accused of perhaps being partisan. It's the opposite. We are here to represent our own residents in Hatch End. Um, where you start, I don't know. We both lived behind um, a school, primary school with nursery, etc., and special needs children. And I can tell you day in and day out, it is very busy all the time. It's not just busy at the beginning at the end of the day. So I think the argument that Mr. Panasar put forward about numbers and f comings and goings, I think he'll find there's more comings and goings than he would like to think. It's uh, between nine and three, isn't it? So from that point of view, I, I, the noise and the parking and the waiting and all the rest of it will be uh, much more frequent than uh, Mr. Panasar seems to think. Um, the other aspect is I know it was a care home before and I did go around with the applicants and I looked at the building and I thought it's a great building to have as something else, but the something else should be something that isn't taking up and spoiling the social lives, etc. Um, now, the key thing that's already been raised by Casa Anjana Patel is around travel. And I'm very sorry to tell you, even when we live around the corner from the school where our children went, it took us more than 10 minutes to walk them there. Now, they've got to walk from Hachen Station. There's no bus. The bus is in the uh, Broadway as well. So from that point of view, little legs 
take a long time. So what are you going to do as a working parent like I, I was? What are you going to do? You're going to jump in your car and say, OK, I'll take my child now. I'll take them now that no one will notice. Doesn't matter, does it? Now multiply that up by the number of working parents we have now, and it really, really will make a difference to the number of cars in use. Um, I don't know what planet uh, the applicants are on thinking that um, everyone's going to do uh, become a walking bus because it won't happen. Uh, you know, it's going to rain, it's going to snow and all the rest of it. But just I know as a working parent, if I'd hand the race for someone else to walk my children to school, I'd have had to have drive them because I'd have to jump on the train and go into London. And uh, I could go on, I won't, but in, in terms of the um, change of use, I think also we need to know about enforcement because there are some things here that really could be uh, uh, abused, if you like. And I know they're not going to use, they say they're not going to use it for mixed use, but what undertaking do we have that they won't do that? I mean, mixed use can be anything really, can't it? So from that point of view, how will we be enforcing that if this happens? So I, I again, like everyone else, Mr Glassman and uh, other residents, and I've been in many meetings with the residents regarding this, they are, for the right reasons, objecting to this. If it was a care home, they wouldn't. But this undermines everything, access, noise, um, the idiocy about Warrington, that didn't make sense to me, frankly. So please just, just listen to the arguments behind my rhetoric and understand that this is inappropriate use for a suburban road. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. John, yep, John Hinckley, yep. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I agree totally with everything that Councillor Lowerman has said, because with little legs, it was impossible to take our children to school in 10 minutes, and we only live about 400 yards from the school. But I would also like to question um, Mr Barry Phillips. I've got a lot of um, time for Barry Phillips. He's a very good traffic engineer, but I don't quite understand how he has come to the figures that he's come to. People are not going to walk from Hatch End Station um, or the H12 bus outside Morrison's all the way up the avenue to the uh, to Oakley Avenue. It's just not on. And on a day like this, which is fairly typical of our winter, it means, as Councillor Lemmerman said, that people are going to jump in their cars. Harrow has declared a climate emergency as we well know, and there's a lots of efforts to uh, stop the levels of pollution. Many of the parents uh, will not live um, within uh, the Harrow Hatch End um, um, area, and they will come by car. And what we're doing, I think, is going against uh, what we're trying to do in Harrow as far as stopping pollution. I could go on, but it will be repetitious. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor John Hinckley. Any comments, my colleagues, committee members? Any comments? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Eileen, yeah. Oh, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, um, it's hard to know where to start, really. Um, you know, as I said before, when I was asking questions of Beverly, um, that what the committee members must be able to do is be confident that the information by which the officers have judged this is plausible, is realistic, is credible, is believable. Um, you know, I mean, not, none of us are, and I'm, I, I can speak for myself, better than anyone else of course but none of us uh, are going to um, simply want to refuse something uh, because a lot of people have objected to it um, I, I mean that that is that is not the case on this committee um, we, we will judge this legally and proportionately but in all honesty in all honesty I, I, I can't believe the figures that have been reduced 
I, 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 you know, I mean, this was refused only last July, and and there were three reasons for refusal. Uh, one uh, was about uh, taking away trees. Um, well, they say they're not going to take trees away. And that, that's OK. I can believe that. They're not going to take them away. That's easy. So that falls away. Um, the, the other uh, was more, more to do with the, I think they thought maybe they were doing themselves a favour by saying they would have more community use out of this. Uh, but then when they realised that was a reason for refusal, they then said, oh, no, no, we're not going to do that now. So that fall, falls away. Um, and I, you know what? There's a condition there and, and I, I kind of accept that. I, I don't think that's difficult to get your head round. Then there's the third reason for approval that was only refused last July. And I, I don't think that's been remedied. I don't think that this proposal, going by the ridiculous assertions that have been made, ridiculous, 75% of 127 kids, little kids, are going to walk there, given the catchment area and given the kind of climate we're in. There's no way that will happen. 11% using cars, completely implausible, unbelievable. Um, and um, just, just the the whole the whole thing uh, is is it, it beggars belief. Actually, um, I, I can't I can't understand um, quite frankly how that reason has been uh, addressed. Um, and it it is still a problem. Um, and the fact that this is, is a prior approval doesn't make it hard for us to refuse it. I mean, th there's a lot of um, misinformation around how easy it is to get permission if it's only a prior approval. Well, we can consider less things, it's true, and we're time limited, which is a challenge, but the things that we can consider carry weight. Um, th these are very important elements. Of it. Thank, thank you, Melanie. You've taken your point. So. Well, you, you may have taken my point, but I haven't finished. Um, and I, I'm going to propose refusal. OK, okay thank you. Uh, and um, if, if you don't mind, I think this is too important to rush. Um, the reason for refusal, which is um, not dissimilar to the reason for refusal that was given in July, is as follows. The submitted noise impact assessment is lacking in credibility and therefore it fails to realistically assess the general disturbance and noise associated with this with the use of the site and from the comings and goings to the site by visitors and users of the site and along the street and the potential impact thereon upon the quality of life the neighbouring residents. The proposal is therefore not in compliance with provision T2 brackets B brackets 2 of class 2 part 3 schedule 21 of the town and country planning general permitted development brackets England order 2015 as amended. In the absence in the absence of realistic and believable information, the proposal has the potential to have a detrimental impact on the residential amenities of neighbouring residents, contrary to National Planning Policy Framework brackets 2019, policy 7.15b of the London Plan 2016, Policy G14, Publication London Plan 2020, and Policy DM1 of Harrow's Development Management Policies Local Plan 2013. Thank you. Thank you, Merlin. So, can you go to Christine, please? You got your hand up first. I did. Thank you, Gazonka. Um, I found myself in. Um, Slightly in two minds about this. Um, I mean, I am I'm elderly. I live on my own now. One of the nicest sounds that I can hear is children playing. And so I am 
um, a little disappointed that local residents seem to find the sound of children playing at Mitra through their windows um, objectionable. Um, but be that as it may, um, I also have experienced, I'm sure all the other um, people who are here who are parents, of walking children to school in all weathers um, and um, very successfully. Um, and on those two counts, I do find the objections upsetting um, because I don't like the idea myself personally, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, of areas that become only for young people or only for old people. It's the delight and the benefit to the older people if they have younger families around them. But even so, I do find that um, I am not feeling comfortable about the assessment of the noise level from the travel. Um, I think the noise level of the children playing outside is neither here nor there. Um, but I do think that there will be, sadly, the world being the way it is, there will be parents dropping off their children. Now, I do take the applicant's um, point, which is it's not a day nursery. This is sadly a nursery where children might be left for quite a long time, but it is a place where people will drop their children off for part of a day and those times will be different. I am aware of that. However, this is Harrow. This is a place where people love their cars. And so I think it is sadly unrealistic to think that people will walk to this nursery. Um, and that I, um, you know, I'm not defending the use of cars. In fact, I abhor it. Anybody who knows me will know that. You know, when there's a necessity, yes, there's a necessity. But actually, God gave us feet. And if we can use them, we should. But I think this is Harrow. There are pressures on working parents. They have to get there and they have to get back. And so I think that I will find it difficult to support this. And therefore, I am considering abstention. Thank you. I got Simon next. Oh, thank you, Chair. You took me a little bit by surprise there. I thought I wasn't next in the queue, but, but never mind. Um, I spent a long time since I've been back on the council promoting healthy schools, healthy walking, walk to school, um, particularly at primary schools and in this locality, particularly at Grimsdyke. A big effort to persuade children, to persuade their parents to <coughs> allow them to walk to school or part of the way to school. And I think I'm very committed to that, but it really doesn't apply where the child is of very young age. It doesn't really apply to nurseries. It doesn't apply to kids. I, I, I can't remember what the age range is here, but it certainly doesn't apply to kids of six months old. It doesn't really apply to two and three year olds, maybe four year olds. So I have to say I tend to agree with what Marilyn has been saying in terms of the figures. When I first saw this matrix of 75%, 11%, 12%, and it said 75% walking, I just thought it was a typo. I thought they got it the wrong way round because there is absolutely, based on experience of travel patterns to other similar nursery schools in this area, in my area and across Harrow, there is absolutely no way that anything but the majority of trips to drop off children to these schools, these nurseries will be by car. And so given that Barry was calculating his figures based on the percentages given, the figures in the report are going to be way off. They're going to be much, much higher uh, in terms of round trips. And his figures didn't also include staff journeys, the, the journeys of the 25 staff, which adds on to it. So I'm very concerned that the traffic figures that are based, that the recommendations are based on, are not accurate. They don't stand up in my mind. Um, so I have grave concerns about that. Thank you. Thank you. And Jenna, you're next. Thank you very much. Um, actually, Chris, uh, Councillor Baxter was before me. Anyway, so. But it's I will speak time. anyway. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's difficult to see, you know. It's okay, no problem. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. 
um, I, I mean, uh, who, who knows better than Councillor Robson about uh, transport? Because I understand, I mean, she does take a lot of, um, uh, you know, London transport and travel. So it was nice to hear from her about, about the transport itself. And I think Councillor Brown has actually touched on uh, what I was going to say. But I still, I still, yes, I do agree with you about 75%. And when I saw it, I felt the same because um, uh, it is our transport team that actually um, uh, tells us uh, uh, that there is a problem uh, with the schools uh, and the children coming by car in, in primary school as well as secondary school. So the, uh, the report that we have got in front of us, um, as Councillor Brown said, I, 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 I don't think it is an accurate report, to be honest. I still will wait for um, our transport team to find me a school in Hera, because being a portfolio holder for schools, I have visited every school in this borough and every school had the same problem about uh, parents uh, bringing their children by car. Um, so I will be waiting for the transport department to come up with a school in Hera, which actually has 75% walking, cycling or by scooter. Um, so I, 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 I would just say that uh, it is really difficult to believe the figures that we have been given by um, our officers on this report. And for that reason, I will definitely be refusing this application. Christopher. Um, thank you. I, I won't repeat what's been said, but I do share a lot of the concerns um, that other members have raised. And I would like to second um, the motion for refusal that Councillor Ashton proposed. Ajay, you have something to say? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, uh, Christine and Simon, obviously my colleagues have touched upon what uh, I, I was going to say, so I'm not going to kind of sound repetitive. Normally, my dear friend Barry is uh, always uh, spot on uh, because we worked, uh, you know, numerous uh, sort of times in my ward and otherwise, uh, but I seem to have sort of a great difficulty in understanding the stats again, uh, uh, in this case again. So uh, it kind of puts me into a, a bit of a dilemma. So uh, that's where we are, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can have my comments. Uh, I mean, frankly, I've got serious concern when you say 75 percent uh, three to four years are going to walk. Uh, I mean, I live uh, quite near to primary school and a couple of nurseries. In the morning, even my drive is blocked because uh, parents traveling, they just drop and rush and they always in rush. Uh, and three to four years to walk, 10 minutes. Uh, I don't think so uh, is possible. Uh, if weather is bad, raining, stormy, uh, so it's, it's a difficult. So uh, can I go back to now? I got uh, Beverly also would like to say something. Or should I go to Christine first, then Beverly? I just wanted to say that some time ago somebody invented something called a buggy. So I just thought I might mention that as a mother who has taken children to school. I just thought, it, you know, I mean, this may be a renaissance idea, but I just thought I would mention it. Thank you. Three to four years not in buggy. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beverly. Um, just just a, a request, please. Um, if members are minded to refuse the application, um, bearing in mind the decision to do that will be delegated to me pending the end of the consultation period. Um, I would like the opportunity um, in consulta um, consultation with yourself, Chair, but with Councillor Ashton to review the precise wording on that. We have to be very careful that the reasons for refusal fully reflect the three areas that we're allowed to assess the application on and that they don't stray into general amenity considerations, for example. I'm not saying that the, the, the suggestion um, suggested reason needs changing. I'd, I'd just like the opportunity to, to review it and confirm that with you, if that's possible, please. Thank you, Beverly. Uh, Marilyn, you would like to say something? Yes, uh, Chairman, since I, I was the one who proposed refusal, thanks, Beverly. Um, any assistance from your, from, your, from your professional aspect is most welcome, as you as always. Um, but just, just out of interest, uh, this reason for refusal is, for refusal is largely 
the same as the reason for refusal last time. It, it is like by one of your professional officers. And, and, and I totally agree with what's being said. I to do because nothing has changed. I, yeah. I talked it a little bit and I added um, a, a more um, updated London plan policy because that was omitted from last July's reason. And I added a couple of extra words at the beginning, but actually it's the same. So if it's wrong, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> it's not I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just want to, I just want to review the pre precise wording on that. And also just to say, you referred to schedule 21 of the general committee development order is actually schedule two. So we will make that amendment. Um, wrong then last time oh dear oh no it's it, it's it's scheduled the reason for refusal is scheduled two in, in the in the report but all, all i'm saying is um um if you if you just give me the chance to have a look at that i will revert to you um tomorrow on that i, I believe we have a meeting tomorrow anyway so i'll revert to you on that uh, precise wording if members are minded to to after the meeting is I will type it out and email you what I've read out. Thank you. Okay, and, and then you'll have it in writing and then you'll be able to okay. review Thank you. Thank you very well. If there are any amendments, I will agree with you and with the chair. Thank you. Thank you very well. So can, can we just take a vote on motion to refuse? I got my friend Eje Maru gone for two minutes. Uh, can we take a vote? He might join us later on or? I just, yeah, just should we take a break just for a minute because we need. Yeah, can a, we, we take need a break for five minutes? I just, I just, just for two minutes. Chairman, I don't think we can take a break actually. All right, we can take a vote and uh, I just hopefully we can. I mean, I think right in the middle of this, I, 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 so I no disrespect, but I think that would be. Yeah, wrong. no, no, you, you're right. Let's, uh, let's, let's take a vote on uh, motion to refuse by Merlin and uh, second by. Councillor Christopher Baxter. So I just start with Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussions on I vote in favour of the motion to refuse. Christine. Um, I have heard all the discussion and I I am going to abstain. Thank you. Simon. Thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussions and I vote in favour of refusal. And Jenna? Thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussion and I vote in favour of refusing uh, the application on the motion. Uh, Christopher? Thank you, Chair. Um, I've heard all the discussion and I vote in favour of the motion to refuse the application. Ajay, you are back now, so it's motion to refuse. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, Chair. Yeah, I just needed to be excused. My apologies. Yeah. You mute. AJ, you're mute. We're just we're just going to the vote, AJ. Yeah, AJ, uh, uh, we'll be just going on the motion to refuse. OK, so I, I, I'll take my turn now. I've heard all the discussion and uh, I vote in favor of uh, application to be refused. Thank you. Ajay, are you there? He's disappeared again. <laughs> I think he's got having some uh, internet problems. With respect, Chair, I don't think we need to give, given that he left it, the meeting uh, for a minute. May I ask, uh, Beverly, is it OK? Can you just. Uh, you think. heard all the discussion, though. Yeah, Ajay. AJ, quick, do it before you get. You should be muting, Ajay. Yeah, at the moment. I mean, sorry, I missed the la uh, what was being said. I had some issue with the uh, IT here with the network, I, and I missed that. So, sorry, Chair, I don't know what's been we're, said last. We're just putting it to the vote, AJ. That's all. We're just you missed nothing. We're just putting it to the vote. Yeah, Time we're vote. just putting the motion to refuse. So, uh, we need your vote. What do you think? Uh, well, I heard a, we had chair, a discussion. Chair, yes. chair, sorry, may I may I interrupt? I, I'm the the legal. Yes. Yeah. After. 
uh, repeat um, what what um, um, uh, Councillor Maru has has missed. So if there's some ways it could be re, you know, we could recap what he has missed. That will be helpful. Mm. That, yes, thank you for that legal. Sorry, I missed your name there. This is what I was just trying to ask was what's been said by the previous speakers uh, during my absence. So I know what went on. My apologies. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Ajay, I mean, we didn't say anything. Right. Uh, we just uh, uh, took a vote on the motion to refuse. OK. And uh, I mean, do you want me to just uh, say, I mean, the uh, Marilyn, uh, in favour to refuse, Christine yep. Epstein, uh, Simon. Chair, yeah. Uh, chair, may I just suggest that Mr. Maru, um, the Council Maru's um, informs us as to at which point he lost connection. So if if he could say what he heard last, then we would know at what stage he lost connection and okay, what he needed. Okay, thank you. Ajay. Yeah, uh, at the time of voting, that's what I seem to have missed uh, that. So I don't know who's voted, who's uh, you know in favor or against or abstained. So if I could sort of uh, bring you back onto that, and then I'm happy to cast my uh, uh, for, against or abstain, please. Yeah, this is what uh, Ajay was uh, explaining that Marilyn uh, uh, motion to refuse in favor. Sure. Uh, Christine Epson D, Simon in favor to refuse, and Jenna in favor to refuse, myself in favor to refuse, and uh, Christopher in favor to refuse. Now you will wait yeah. for your decision. Yeah, thank you, Chair, for that, and I apologize for making you go back. Uh, I've heard the full discussions, and I uh, in favor to refuse, please. Thank you. Thank you. So thank that you. Thank, is you. Refused. thank you. Chair, may I just, Chair, may I just comment? I, 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 I want to apologise if it seems that I was trying to delay the meeting. I was no. only thinking the, of the validity of votes. That was the only reason I suggested a break. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Christine. Thank you. Let's go to the next one, uh, 201, Cornwall Court. Uh, and this, uh, Shamal. Thank you for sending us uh, the comparison. So we can start on that now. Thank you. You're can members see my screen? <clears throat> can everyone see my screen? Can members see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Smart, just go ahead. All right. Okay. The application site concerns a three story block of flats located on the northern side of Cornwall Road. The site is located in a critical drainage area within the borough and there are no other site constraints. Okay. So these are some photos of the site and existing and proposed plans. The proposed development proposes a prior approval for an additional story at a height of 2.9 meters to accommodate four additional flats. As before mentioned, this is for prior approval and it is not for planning commission. Uh, this prior approval application takes into consideration the following areas, which are the main considerations. I will go through each of these. So, the first one is the impact on the transport and highways. As this information in regard to the highways impact was assessed by the highways officer who noted the following. The proposal is, is unlikely to have a severe impact on the surrounding highways network. It is possible that there may be some additional on street parking. However, in line with current policies, a car free and car light uh, proposals should be considered in locations where there is good access to public transport and local services. Despite the area having a PTAR rating of two, Hatch End is a small but busy district with reasonable public transport options available. As such, the highways officer raised no objections. Uh, the second area of assessment was the uh, air traffic and defence impact. Cornwall Court, the subject site, is not located within an RAS North Holt safeguarding zone. And therefore, the Ministry of Defence, uh, sorry, therefore, a Ministry of Defence consultation was not required. As such, 
the scheme was acceptable in this regard. Uh, the third area was uh, contamination risk. Uh, the site is not on the council's con on, on the council's contaminated land register. Likewise, the environmental health officer raised no objection. The fourth area of consideration is the flood flood risk. The site is not identified within any flood any flood zone. Cornwall Road is within the main sorry. However, Corn, uh, Cornwall Road is within the main axis of the site and is identified within a surface water flood zone 3A and 3B. As such, the council's drainage authority has requested for uh, conditions to be attached for emergency planning information to be submitted, to, sorry, to be attached. As such, this has been attached by a, a condition. The next area of consideration is the external appearance of the building. Fenestration of the proposed would align with that below. The use of the matching, the use of matching materials would ensure the property would have a, a general appearance consistent with the existing block. The following area of consideration is the provision of adequate natural light. A daylight and sunlight report was submitted in support of the proposal, and it was concluded that all habitable rooms will have adequate and acceptable access to light. Next is the impact upon the amenity of the existing building and the neighboring premises. The additional floor would wholly, would wholly be contained within the existing footprint of the property. Therefore, it would be unlikely that a proposal would result in a loss of privacy, overlooking or loss of light to existing or future occupiers. In regard to the neighboring properties, given the separation distance between the subject property and those neighboring properties, it is not considered that there would be an unacceptable impact to their residential amenities. The final area of consideration is the impact on the protect on any protected views. The site is not located within a protected view, as such development would not be unacceptable in this regard. Considering these points, the planning committee is asked to grant prior approval subject to conditions. Are there any questions? Thank you, Shmuel. Any questions? Members, any questions? No. Can we go to our respected uh, members? Uh, is it Jean? Are you going to speak first or John? John is going to speak first. Okay, John. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, I would like to uh, propose that this application is refused. It's very difficult with prior applications, and it's only thanks to the efforts of uh, the Conservative members on the planning um, uh, committee that we were able to bring this to the committee so that there will be a proper debate about it. This is a very difficult story and the lease is such that the freeholder has, without any consultation with any of the leaseholders, decided unilaterally that they would build another story. The first that the actual leaseholders knew about it was when a letter popped through one of the doors saying, oh, by the way, there's planning permission to build an extra story. The moral of this tale, if there is one, is that you have to be friends with your leaseholder because unfortunately uh, the relations between, sorry, you have to be friends freeholder. with your freeholder because the relations between the freeholder and the leaseholder for all sorts of reasons were not too good. I'd also like to turn to the transport um, assessment. It was obviously done by someone who's not been to Cornwall Road. Yeah. Cornwall Road is the road just off um, Hatch End Broadway, and it's one of the busiest and most congested streets in that part of Hatch End. There's a very busy and successful garage, and parking is really a nightmare. And I know that it's only an extra four flats 
but already the uh, the refuse collection lorries have a lot of difficulty going down that road. There are constant uh, comments from the neighbours that uh, their cars have been scratched and so on and so forth. So for all these reasons, I do feel that the planning uh, committee should reject this application. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Yes, Jane. Yep. Um, if I can add to that, I, 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 again, my bit of indignity here. I find it really in in a in where we live nowadays in a free country that this can be imposed <laughs> on a group of twelve flat flat dwellers without any consultation. It's like someone coming along to our, your house and building a roof, uh, another floor on top. It, it's just the the wrong way around. It may be legally appropriate. I don't know, but I would doubt it. But you know, if you, they build four new flats and sell them, they'll be taking the profits. And guess what? The leaseholders underneath won't be getting any of those profits. All they'll have is the additional cost for upkeep, parking, etc. So, in addition to the things that uh, Councillor Hinkley has talked about in terms of congestion, it will just be, it it is an unjust process that benefits a few rather than actually looks after our community. Um, and, you know, these are very ordinary flat flats. You can see from the photographs, can't you? Uh, they're not grand. And to actually put four more on there and m really make it like a, a very close development is going to be a big issue. But, uh, you know, there are a number of different levels here, Mr Chairman, that I, f I feel that this should be refused on. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Yes, Marilyn. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, as you know, I, I, along with the uh, previous uh, application, I called this in as well. Um, and I'm very grateful to Shamel for sharing um, with us the information that we asked for at the um, briefing yesterday, because it's helped, particularly me, uh, since I've been trying to fathom exactly what, what we can and can't consider and what our powers really are legally. Um, I've been trying to fathom what the differences between these two uh, applications are, only insofar as that, that they were objected to as a kind of uh, a, a, a dual issue, although they're different and in different roads in, in a sense. And I've learnt quite a lot about, uh, about the parameters of what is acceptable under a prior approval and what isn't. Um, and actually, um, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, although I completely understand what councillors uh, Lammerman and Hinckley have said, and, and they're right to say what they said, uh, it seems so unfair. Uh, but unfortunately, um, the, the um, fact is that with this block, and I'd, I'd like Beverly or Shamal to correct me if I've misunderstood, um, the thing that makes this acceptable as a prior approval is the fact that it kind of continues up along the same sort of lines, as it were. So the, the actual extra floor that is going to be put on, it, it, it kind of marries up with the um, style and, and, and the architecture and the fenestration or whatever words you want to use of the existing block. And, and therefore, you know, it, it, it doesn't really actually increase the height any more than one additional floor can increase the height. Um, with Devonshire, um, the problem it was it wasn't a prior approval because uh, it was actually um, well over the uh, scope of the curtilage of the existing building um, and quite and quite and quite. It wasn't that it was so much higher. It was only a little bit higher, that, that much higher. But it was just the architecture of it was such that it didn't sort of sit on top of the building in the same way. And I, if I've got that wrong, I, I apologise. But the reason why Devonshire Court was refused is because it was unacceptable as a prior approval. And um, there, were, there were issues around the, the, the footprint of the actual uh, work itself of the extra story. Um, whereas in this case, um, unfortunately, um, we, we don't have any grounds to refuse this. Um, and, and, and if I could um, 
think of as something that would win an appeal or that was sustainable, I'd like to. Um, uh, but but one has to be responsible and only refuse, or in, uh, I can only speak for myself now, I would only propose a refusal if I actually thought it was sustainable and legal and stood any chance of winning an appeal. Uh, so, um, but it, but it is it is noteworthy, and this this should give some comfort to some of the more general comments that have been made about prior approvals that they can be refused. We just refused one. <laughs> and uh, are often refused, but in this one case, unfortunately, we can't. In my view, I might be wrong, but I don't think we can. I think that we'd end up um, being deemed to be unreasonable, frankly, if we tried. And we might even have costs awarded against us because there is no real planning reason why. And I am sorry about that. But uh, I'm not happy about it, just to say. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Merlin. So can we just uh, take a vote on uh, the application to, to grant? So I'll start with uh, Anjana. Thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussion and I vote to abstain. Ajay? I've heard all the discussions and I vote to grant. Christopher. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussion um, and I'm abstaining. Christine. Thank you, Chair. I have heard the discussions. Um, I find it particularly helpful that we've had the discussion this evening that we have. Um, but given as it is put before us, I, I vote to grant. Simon. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I've heard all the discussions and I vote to grant. Yes, my turn. I heard all the discussion and uh, I vote to grant the application. Thank you. Let's go to the next one, 101. Premium House. Chair, yeah, I don't think Councillor Ashton's voted. Well, I, I, because Sorry. Because I, I, I wasn't happy, but I don't actually think I said what I was going to do. No! <laughs> oh. uh, sorry, man. Only because you left me out. I, I didn't? <laughs> I admire his, Marilyn, I admire the chair's courage. I do have to say that. <laughs> my apology, Marilyn. No, you don't need to apologize. I, I thought I'd, I'd take you first, you know. <laughs> you're, you're doing okay. a great job and it's a pleasure to have you as chairman. It's been a breath of fresh air the last two meetings. I've heard all the discussion and I vote to abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My apology again, Ms. Let's go to the next one, 101. Premium House. And there we got uh, Nabil. Good evening, Councillors. Yeah, in the book. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, can you just confirm that you can see the presentation? Yeah, we can see. So, just to give you a brief of the supplementary addendum, there was one late objection which was received um, that's detailed in the supplementary, uh, mm -hmm. supplementary addendum. Sorry. Yeah, we got that. <clears throat> Um, in terms of the application site, the proposal relates to Premier House, which you can see on the pictures on the right, is a five-storey building located within the Woolstone District Centre. So the ground floor is uh, occupied by two retail units and also the, the, the Woolstone Library. Uh, and the first floor is occupied by a Premier Banketing uh, Suite and the upper floors are currently vacant. The site does benefit from extant prior approval to convert the second, third and fourth floors into 73 residential units. Um, in terms of the site context, uh, Peel House car park is adjacent to the east of the site. And also in terms of the wider development context, uh, Block B of the Palmerston Road development, which is up to 17 storeys in height, is located approximately 100 metres to the southeast of the application site. The site itself is uh, within the Harren Wilson Opportunity Area and has a, a, public, a public transport accessibility rating of uh, 6A, which means that it has uh, excellent uh, links to sustainable transport alternatives. So moving on, the proposal is for the construction of three new floors together with the change of use of the banqueting suite and former educational floor space to provide 30 new flat, 39 new flats 
in addition to uh, a component of flexible office workspace uh, on the first floor. So um, as you can see uh, on the bottom plan, this shows the layout of the flats, which would be on the, the upper floors that are being proposed. Uh, and the plan here shows the layout of the flats proposed on the first floor in addition to the communal um, employment space. The proposal would be car free and therefore would only provide for to say, to say blue badge parking bays. Uh, as you can see from the CGI, the proposal would also uh, involve uh, external modifications to the building and fenestrations uh, and also to the shop front detailing. So the main plan considerations are just bullet pointed there. Um, there have been four objections, as I've <clears throat> noted, that are covered in the report. With regard to the principle of development, so the provision of and location of new housing would accord with the development plan strategy for growth within this opportunity area and on previously developed land. The loss of educational floor space has been previously considered acceptable for this location and has been vacant for a number of years. The banqueting suite on the site has a designation of Su Generous and therefore the council's policy team considered that the loss of the banqueting seat would be acceptable and would not conflict with relevant policies in this regard. Uh, and meanwhile, the new flexible workspace that's going to be introduced would help support the vitality and viability of the district centre. With regards to the quantum of housing, the, the mix is considered acceptable, consisting primarily of uh, one bed, two person units within the district centre and makes efficient use of the land. The proposal itself would come forward as a build to rent scheme and the application has gone through viability testing and was the subject of an independent review where it was considered that the development would not be capable of providing any affordable component uh, to the scheme. Notwithstanding this, the applicant has still offered six units to provide it as discount market rent units on a without prejudice basis. So offices consider that subject to planning obligations as set out in the report and appropriate conditions, the principle of development for, for the mixed use scheme would be acceptable. Turning to the character and appearance, the additional height is considered to relate appropriately within the emergent development context and conforms with the requirements for taller buildings as set out in the Harren Wollstone Area Action Plan. The proposed development itself has also been conceived through a detailed design led approach and has gone undergone robust design scrutiny, including two design review panels. <clears throat> Through the extensive refurbishment of Premier House, the proposal would provide a more attractive and higher quality external finish to the building that would improve the legibility, visual appearance of the district centre and enhance the townscape character. And in the context of the opportunity area and the nature of the site intensification within an urban location, officers consider that the proposal would maintain an appropriately high standard of residential amenity for neighbouring and future occupiers. So just to conclude, uh, just to reiterate again, um, the, the provision of housing and commercial uses on the site is consistent with the development plan spatial strategy for growth. The proposal itself would provide a high quality development and much needed physical renewal of the site, thereby assisting in the regeneration of the Wollstone District Centre and subject to the planning obligations that are set out in the report and uh, conditions, uh, officers request that the, mem that the planning permission is granted uh, and members agree to the reasons for approval. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Nabil. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Yes, uh, Christine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nabil, for your presentation. Forgive me, I think we we have discussed this when we've been brief, but I'm just seeking reassurance on the issue of cladding. Um, am I right in thinking that there is a condition which actually relates to the cladding to ensure that we're not going to have any problems. Am I right in that? <clears throat> uh, thank you, Councillor, for your question. Yeah, there is there is a condition that does require uh, details of materials to be submitted. I'm just trying to find out the exact condition number. Um, if you'll just bear with me a second. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, I, so, it's there. Yeah, I should know. It's just that con I'm, condition my nine, brain stopped. Uh, of, of the recommendation um, does ask for um, facing materials to be submitted and, and we would, um, given the height of the building, have that uh, also double checked with our colleagues from Builder Control. Right, especially given even even further concerns recently. Thank you very much, Nabil. That's very helpful. Thank you. Marilyn? Yes, I mean, uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> the thing to bear in mind about this is that this is in our opportunity area. Um, and so the, the kind of 
projects that uh, we would be hopefully anyway um, upset about in in outside of our opportunity area the kind of heights that we uh, are seeing applications uh, coming in for that might concern us in this area particularly given that the origin buildings which were refused by the committee uh, were imposed on us by um, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, unfortunately. Um, we are um, almost certainly going to struggle uh, to um, resist this um, if it's refused and it goes to appeal um, because of the uh, area in which it sits. Um, it is, um, I can't say I'm happy about it. Uh, I, I don't think it's uh, the um, best thing that we've ever seen happen um, and I do think it's a pity uh, that uh, because of the um, council or this administration's plans and certainly wouldn't be ours uh, plans to um, move the civic centre onto Pill Road car park uh, we are um, obviously to a certain extent looking at this because of that that there's a consequence uh, to, to these things not that it's got anything to do with the planning merits of this, and I, I hasten to add it hasn't, but um, I, you know, um, had it not been for, for the foolishness of trying to uh, put, put a new civic centre on an inappropriate site, uh, we, we might not have uh, had to um, uh, look at this in, in the way that we are with the change of use and the moving, uh, hopefully not to an inappropriate site of the banqueting facility. Uh, so. Uh, but, but it is what it is, and um, it's in front of us. Um, and um, all of the answers about the cladding and and uh, the, the things that were concerning us were uh, were amply answered um, very well by Mayor at our briefing. Um, so, uh, as I say, um, it, it, I don't think, given the context of the area, uh, that we, we can refuse it. Uh, but um, I can't say that um, in, in the general scheme of things, I'm delighted by it. Thank you. Thank you, Merlin. Uh, and Jenna? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Ashton has already uh, touched on the height, so I will not actually um, repeat again, but I do have a concern about the affordable housing um, and how they're going to actually monitor it, um, you know, because they're not going to provide anything else, uh, you know, away from this, uh, um, development uh, is uh, mentioned. Um, I'm a little bit um, wary about it, uh, that how are they going to work out, you know, affordable housing and, and that that's one of my concerns. So that's what I would I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Can we just go to vote to grant? So may I start with uh, Marilyn? Yes. No, that way you won't forget me. <laughs> yes, I've heard all the discussion and I'm going to abstain. Christine. Thank you, Chair. I've heard the discussion and I vote to grant. I do. Thank you, Chair. I've heard all the discussions and I vote to grant. Thank you. Christopher. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not in entirely happy about it, so I've heard all the discussion and I vote to abstain. Simon. Thank you. I've heard all the discussion, so I vote to grant. And Jenna? Um, I do have concerns, so I have all heard all the discussion and I vote to abstain. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, I've heard all the discussion and I vote to grant. Thank you very much. And uh, consultation from neighbouring authorities, uh, none presented. Prior approval application, none presented. Any other business? No. And we no. are going to, um, uh, unless I've misunderstood in response to the questions, we were going to um, have a brief, very brief um, interlude, as it were, about um, that. I'd like, I'd like to think that as soon as as we can, we will be able to. Um, It'd be nice to see you actually in person. <laughs> yeah, we 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 will uh, we will have a discussion on that, Marilyn, for sure. But I'd like to, to more formally say um, it, it doesn't have to go to a vote. I don't mean it in that context, Chair. I don't want to force the issue, but you know we've got some very contentious, potentially very contentious applications coming up in the next few months. 
And if only we, we knew with a crystal ball, with any certainty, how um, this, this dreadful pandemic would go and how it's affecting us. It's, it's terrible, really. It's terrible. Uh, but uh, I know that after the 7th of May, uh, we might even be faced with uh, having to have these meetings in person. Yes, let, let's hope and pray that by April or May that everything is normal and we can yeah, see each other. And before that, yeah, if, if, uh, oh, well, if the guidelines are eased, then we, we will uh, we'll discuss it. Please, please, please forgive me. It's, you know, because we get on really well. I don't know who's going to be the chairman. I, 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 I'm, I'm all ears, but so we're, we're, I'm sure yeah. all will be revealed at some point. Um, I hope it's you, but I, I, I've got my doubts. Uh, but uh, what we're going to have to do is. Sorry about that. All right, I understand. What we're going to have to do is we are going to have to come to some arrangement because that vote that we took, which was proposed by uh, Councillor Ferry, Keith Ferry, uh, I don't think that was that helpful. Really, I, I, you know, I, I think we we get on well enough with each other, even though I know we can disagree at times about certain things to be able to um, am be amicable about how we we go forwards. And it's very important that we do physical site visits for some of these major developments. It really is. And the idea that we, you know, uh, that a vote went through at the last meeting that the site visits um, you know, are going to be established as virtual for the foreseeable future. I don't think that was right. So, I, I mean, I, I trust I trust, you know, my colleagues from all parties in, enough that we can work it out amicably yep. and hopefully, you know, we will we'll, we'll do. Yeah. We'll do. Really. Thank, um, that, Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, you, you got your hand up now. Yeah, I won't repeat what uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Ashton said, but I would just wanted to remind you, uh, Chair, that we've all had our vaccination as well, the first one. So uh, we, I think we can go back um, to the site visits is what I want to say. Thank you. Yeah, OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening and enjoy your dinner, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, officers, for your help. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.